Yeah, on our previous show, we understood that we as parents have a very significant role in the development of our children. You even said that it's more important to educate the parents than the children in order for the child to turn out to be happy and successful and having good relations with his environment. We said that it's very important for the parent to have a friendly relationship with their child, not to limit them, to know how to show an example. And we'd like to elaborate on it and to start out with a question about the early years, where we see that children behave towards other children in a very, let's call it, non-friendly way. They're very possessive of domineering, sometimes not allowing other children to come near. And we as parents, our inclination is to tell them, behave this way, do that. And why does that help? We think that by doing so, why do we want to impose something which befits a grown-up person on a baby, on this small animal? and we think that it suits it. First of all, I'd like to protect my child from unpleasant or violent behaviors of other children, so I'd like to intervene. To intervene, it doesn't mean to force him to share with everyone, which is against his nature. Why do we have to destroy his desire to play, to control this way? It's a basic instinct that a small person has. I don't see this as something good. So, where do you allow the child his freedom, even when it comes at the expense of the feelings of other children? If it hurts someone, then it does. Then everyone hurts each other, but you have to teach them, not that you tell them, give them, leave it, don't take it. This doesn't help, but we have to develop each child according to his age, according to how much he can understand this, the matter of mutuality, connection, participation, as much as it's possible. Till the age of two, they're incapable of that at all. They don't have this concept. From the age of two, three, they start understanding that they have to share, and there's a kind of friendship and connection, and they can play together and enjoy each other and enjoy society. Then the social matter begins. The development of the human within that small animal, but till the age of two, three, it's really an animal. Of course, we can work with them like you work with animals, that by beatings or by candy, maybe we can do it, but actually, if not for reward or punishment, they don't understand. It kind of contradicts what you said on the previous show, that in the first years, if the parent develops friendly relations with his child, how? Only by example. Example, talking, but not that I force him to do something in a way that whatever I do with him, I do, and what he does in return, I pay no attention. I give, I talk, I explain that I have to give and receive and do this and do that, and every time I explain and really put on a show I demonstrate my relations, friendly relations towards others and all that in order for the child to learn from it as much as possible. But this isn't something that I demand of him. Whatever he grasps, he does. I'm talking about up to the age of three, suppose. That if I correctly understand, the basis is, as you said, that yes, they are possessive and meaning that there is something about their essence which isn't that friendly and nice and that's okay. What do you mean it's okay? A child, till the age of two at least, he's like an animal, he doesn't understand anything besides himself, that this is mine, and even if he sees something 
that someone else has. He doesn't see it as belonging to someone else. He simply takes it. He doesn't feel someone else. He probably also doesn't feel the mother and her needs and what's good for her. Right. And so the mother, she has to begin throughout these two first years. She has to start working with her child in a way that she at least shows them. In terms of whatever he can grasp, he should. But we always behave to him according to his own way. Raise a child according to his own way, where we don't demand anything of him, but we show everything by example. Whatever he grasps, he does, however much he responds, he does. So if I show that I'm considerate towards him and I do things because I want for him to feel good, he'll learn how to behave towards me and others, he'll grasp it for sure. The question is to what extent and to what extent will he want to behave correspondingly. It's pretty complicated because many parents nowadays, they only try to do everything their kids want want and so on and they think that if they will love them limitlessly that will make them better people but we know that it doesn't work there's also the other side of it he who spares his rod hates his child if we don't limit the child we don't show him certain boundaries he becomes spoiled and so on so how do you combine the two on the one hand a good example and on the other hand to set boundaries you combine them all the time. What can I say? What does it mean, he who spares his rod hates his child? That he has to know that even towards a little child you have to behave in judgment, mercy, and by the middle line.